Thank you for staying with us. Uh, time now to get into the papers, to get into them incisively and find out what they have to share with us. As always, we have most of the dailies and the other uh, papers that we have to look at this morning. But joining the conversation, we have uh, Bobby Banson. He's a lawyer. He is our guest for the review. Bobby, a very good morning to you. Hello, Bobby Banson. Hello, good morning, Ben. How are you doing? Well, I, we have life. <laughs> we can only <laughs> thank How about I, you? <laughs> I, well, same here. Uh, yeah, yesterday was a bit of a rough day, morning till night, but ah, like you said, we have life, we have strength, we're here to do what we do. Out of curiosity, Bobby, I'd like to find out, uh, which, which secondary school or college did you attend? <laughs> I'm not trying to be mischievous. It just hit me that hmm, a few things came to mind, and I was wondering where did Bobby, you know, attend school? Where, 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 did, you, where did you do your? <laughs> well, if I asked you, if you have time, if I asked you to give me a guess, what guess would you make? I don't know why I'm thinking St Augustine's College. I don't know. I could, Close be, I could be way off the mark. What she didn't mention in Fancy Pimit, it's okay. St. Augustine's are our brothers, so it's okay. So I, I guess I have provided the answer now. St. Augustine's are your brothers. I, I, I'm yes. not so sure because it came because there are so many of you guys. I really don't know. No, once, once, once you didn't mention in Fancy Pimit, it's okay. So at Disco? Uh, yes, please. Perfect. Oh, okay. So Kennedy in Japan <laughs> and, and the cohort. Okay. And okay. number one. And number one. And I'm one. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good addition. And I'm one. Eh? Yes, it's true. It is true. Anyway. But, but what, what do you guys have against the Bukim boys? I mean, what, what is it? So you're cool with Adesco, but when it comes to uh, Mfansipim, what is it? Why that rival? No, we, well, you know, in, in our local palace, you see Penyini Wofins, you see Hene. And so hey. Mfansipim thinks that they came first, and so they should be the first in everything, and they don't understand why we keep beating them at everything. You know, I the see. only norm. So they always complain, well, we've been here first, we came first, and yet Adi Shadel is always the first, always the first, and they don't understand. If your, if your motto is, you know, you have to look ahead, and looking ahead does not make you the head, then there's a problem. Mm. So I've, I've been hearing that, just to cap off this conversation, either the first or with the first. Is, is that, is that Adisco? Is that, I mean... That is a, yes, but we say, it, we say it in Latin. Verb primus, welcome primus. Okay, okay. I love the way all our schools, you know, had the Latin in there. My school, Bishop Herman, Sicut Miles Christi as soldiers of Christ. It gives a certain feel to it. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Prisec... In, in your light, we shall see light or something. I, I, I don't remember the Latin, but anyway. <laughs> let's, let's get into the papers this morning. It's good to know you very well. The Daily Graphic uh, newspaper is what we'll start with, Bobby. It says, ECG owes Bui power over $600 million. PAC urges quick recovery. I'm just looking at this and just say, hey, how, how do we even get anything right with such situations? You, you go to Gridco, Wahala Day. GMPC, Wahala Day. If you want to go to the other end of the energy chain, Netco, Wahala, just say, hey. And the independent power producers, the IPPs will also give you their mix and how much. I, hmm. Let me just hold my horses. When we get the details of the story, uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, Bank of Ghana policy rate now 28%. It's been hiked again. And... You know, that is also going to put quite a squeeze on a number of uh, things, including lending at the banks. Over 30,000 unclaimed passports gather dust. Are you one of those? Maybe you put in a request for a passport. You've not picked it up. Please do. And then modernized telecom regulations. MTN Group CEO says so. But the main story, health alert, intensify monitoring of food vendors. And I'm sure that also has something to do with the recent... Five people who were affected, uh, so to speak, let me leave it at that, uh, from eating wachi. And I heard, I think, the husband of the, the woman involved, uh, the, the one who cooks the wachi, saying that 
is going to take quite a while to recover. But <clears throat> the nation must intensify efforts to improve on food safety because of the activities of food vendors who are steadily springing up in the country without proper surveillance of their activities. The Food and Drugs Authority must therefore scale up its surveillance efforts and take steps to clear food vendors without permits off the streets as their operations are a source of danger to people's health and lives. A nutritionist at the Department of Nutrition and Food Science of the University of Ghana, Professor Matilda Steiner, Siedu, who has made the call, emphasized the need for authorities to take surveillance seriously, especially at a time considered to be difficult due to high prices of food and vendors wanting to find a means of making profit from their operations at the least cost. Bobby, I'm sure we all, you know, patronize <clears throat> those street vendors. Uh, even if you are the type that always wants to eat at home, at some point you'll purchase food from some street side location. Uh, we like our zango rice and all of that, but sometimes they get it wrong. Last year, I had some terrible food poisoning on, on the back of something, and this is, wasn't even a Quang Cheng, you know, place or a proper outfit, and uh, it, it was terrible. Rice and soup nearly lost my life. My life flashed before my eyes. What, what do you think? Are we not serious enough? Is it a lack of the human resource? Is it just that, look, they'll spring up anyway? Because these food vendors are supposed to have permits before they sell. Most of them don't. Ben, I, 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 well, to some extent, maybe we can see the FDA, but when, when I hear these things, I look more at the municipal or the district assemblies because they are the ones that have the immediate control over whatever happens either in the municipality or the district assemblies. And they are the ones who every morning send their revenue collectors to go to these food vendors to collect their daily um, um, tools, if, if there is anything, or taxes for the municipal and revenue <coughs> assemblies. Every municipal or district assembly is supposed to have um, um, a food inspectorate division or unit attached to it that they are supposed to go around to check if the food are being sold, uh, the food vendors are selling their food or operating within a sanitation regulations or whatever that the, the, the standards are. Because I would not want to think that the FDA would have to leave because the FDA is a centralized institution and they have units attached to these municipal or district assemblies. So I think that they are the ones that we should hold up responsible for some of these lapses, particularly when they go there to collect tolls or the ta daily taxes. And then when there is a problem for enforcing these uh, sanitation regulations, then they tell you, oh, it's not us. You'd have to go to FDA or you'd have to go to this. I think it is wrong. And secondly, we as citizens should also be able to ask some of these questions. So... You know how we joke and say, oh, the food is nicer if it's sold by a gutter. <laughs> Those kind of statements, I mean, mm -hmm. we, should, we, should, we should stop saying them or joking with them because then it gets into a situation where we don't care anymore. Sometimes... You know, it's, interesting, went, it's, it's interesting because the last time I heard someone say that, it was actually a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> a very, a very <laughs> nice lady. <laughs> oh, but that was what she said. So, you know, when it's by the roadside, and it's it that's is, the best it one. It gives it a different. It gives it a different <laughs> taste. But but then you know, I lost I lost uh, a mate of mine from my disadel, interestingly, because of food poisoning, and wow. it was sad. Yeah, we had just finished university, um, went to eat wache, and he died. It, it it was just like that. He just died. A very brilliant dude. And so when I hear these stories, it's gotten close to me enough for me to know that it's a serious matter. And the question is, what are we doing about it? It's not FDA that lets you, when you are going to buy the food and you see that the environment is not what it's supposed to be, that is, as lawyers will say, prima facie for you to walk away. I understand that sometimes the food is cooked from places that you do not have control over. So that could be the problem where you as a buyer could not have control over. Then we'll have to shift to the municipal assemblies because I do not think that we should put this at the doorstep of the FDA. I think that the municipal and district assemblies should have their food inspectorate divisions up and running to go and even go to where these vendors prepare the food before they come. I was saying that I, I, when, when I was in law school where we used to walk from the 
Rollins Park, the cow lane to, to campus very early in the mornings. And you see where sometimes they are preparing these foods to bring them to Rollins Park or to other food areas to do. And you ask yourself, geez, is this where, you know, these foods are being prepared? Yeah. Because the person buying it at the end will not know where the food was prepared from. Yeah. But the municipal assemblies and the district assemblies, if they task their food inspector divisions very well, you'd see that they'll be able to go around and then inspect these things. Well, it will come back, they'll tell you we don't have the resources, the budget, we don't have the personnel. But if we keep looking at what we do not have for, to prevent us from doing what the law requires us to do, we will suffer some of these consequences. It's not the first. Last year, there was a big restaurant that suffered such you know, um, um, issue. Yeah. It was closed down for and, some and, time. And it's good you're not we mentioning the name. I know why you're, you're doing no, that. No, but, but time no, and again... No. Time and again, yeah. we hear these. And you know, especially for those who sell by the roadside, you often hear that they go, for example, to market and some of the onions and especially the tomatoes, they go for the rotten ones. And there are vendors who actually set aside the rotting ones. You know, sometimes you see the tomatoes with those whitish bits on them. They are mm. dangerous, mm. we've been told. But mm. that is what they, some of them specifically go and purchase and use for stew. So when you're doing this, some of them, I mean, sometimes I think it's a lack of education. They are thinking because we're going to cook it, it will kill everything. But it doesn't necessarily work that way. And, and sometimes it, it can be fatal, like we saw uh, recently. So I don't know. I think, I think a lot more systemic um, guards, you know, like you're mentioning, could help alleviate yeah. the problem. Because too yeah. many people are getting away with murder. They are trying, and especially on the back of the economic situation, like the story says, they're trying to cut corners to make a profit. So they'll do everything to get the cheapest and sell it at the highest price. Mm. And, and the one who will consume it, yeah, that, that's, that's the where the problem is. And it, it, the, you know, these things, like you said, it's not as if those who go to buy the food by the roadside are people who, who are in the lower income level of the economy. You know, in the corporate circles, afternoon watches, even on Sundays, Saturdays, it's a thing for Ghanaians. And so you could have a very, for lack of a better word, an upper class person who would suffer this food poisoning and a lower class person suffering the food poisoning. So yes, I agree that the vendors, they should look at their own conscience and see, is this the kind of food that they would have sold to their own children? And then it will start from the, the people themselves do not have that conscience or that consciousness to stop doing what they are doing. No matter the level of enforcement that you put in, they will find ways and means of beating it, beating the system. One will ask, why, would, why should the tomato that is going bad even be on the market in the first place? When you, are, you, know, you have these uh, municipal assembly persons always walking through the market collecting tools or taxes from these food sellers, and they see that the food that they are having is not what is supposed to be there. If, if you travel outside the jurisdiction, these... Um, um, uh, Supermarkets, you know, they have a, a day or two policy that when you put the food on your shelf, the fresh vegetables or whatever, and yeah. you, are not, you are not able to sell it that day, the next day, you, they are supposed to go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not on the shelf anymore. And you ask yourself, when can we get there? Because we don't, we don't, we, I'm happy we have a consumer protection advocacy group. I think the environment, consumer protection agency, yeah. right? Something like that. It's, it's an advocacy group. Maybe this is something that they can also look at. If they are resourced well by civil society, by private persons, maybe they can take it upon themselves to do the education and then, you know, provoke the, the structures that the law has set up to actually do the enforcement. And if we say that, okay, this, this, this month or this year, we will do food awareness program, the media will get involved, the Consumer Protection Agency will get involved, the Food and Drugs Authority, the municipal and district assemblies, go from one vendor to another with the, um, the information van. They have, uh, they have something, the information services department or something. Yeah. They, would all get, yeah. they would all get involved. I think that it would be a good, a, a good start. Uh, a former <laughs> law school colleague of mine just sent in a message. And uh, it's a funny one. I'll just read it. He says, 
Ben, how do you have Bobby on the show and you guys are talking about food and none of you mentioned Mensima versus the Attorney General? This is, this is a colleague just being mischievous. But anyway, uh, we'll proceed from uh, there. So, oh, well, the, the simple answer is that 90, I'm sure 90% of your viewers will not understand Mensima versus Attorney General. <laughs> Interesting point. Well, let's continue the conversation. So, uh, on page 16, ECG owes uh, Bui Power over $600 million. Uh, let's quickly get to that page. Uh, here we are. So, it says, The Bui Power Authority has advised or has been advised to expedite its rate of recovering $640,373,274.36 million. Debt uh, or that debt owed by the electricity company of Ghana. This is because the money owed the power generator has been indicated to be adversely affecting its ability to operate effectively and deliver on its mandate. The chairman of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament, Dr. James Kluchavegi, gave the advice when the Ministry of Energy and its agencies took their turn before the committee to answer queries raised by the Auditor General for the year 2022. According to the report, the ECG owed the authority $386 million as of the end of December 31, 2019, which increased to the $614 million we are speaking of at the end of 2022. Let's also take a look at the Bank of Ghana policy rate. And the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana has increased the rate at which it lends to other banks from 27% to 28%, the highest in more than 20 years, more than two decades. This means that when banks borrow from the central bank at a higher cost, they will equally increase the interest rates on loans to individuals and corporate bodies. So if Bobby Banson goes for a loan now, it will hit you. If Benjamin Akakbo goes, it will hit you. Uh -huh. So it is expected to ultimately affect the ability to purchase goods and services and hence dows inflationary pressures. But while it may be, it may end up, and, and there's no hard and fast rule, it may end up aiding in the fight against uh, inflation, we could also see it maybe giving some gains to our currency, uh, the Ghana CD. Well, quick thoughts on these two stories? I, I, I think that we are in a stage where we, we, the economy needs some drastic measures. And if mm. um, this is how the managers of the economy think that um, we would promote or we would stabilize the situation and make it better. We would all have to buy the bullets and then and then and then move in move in with it. We've been we've been increasing the policy rate for a while. I mean, the American Fed had to hike it for a number of times. I think it's tapered off. We're still increasing ours, and and the mm. question is when we will put an end to this because it ha has consequences for the business community. If you can't borrow from the banks, there are so many things you cannot do. And that could also constrict our economy in, in terms of private enterprise, especially, and, and all of that. So there are different dynamics. Like it points to highest we've seen in two decades. So that's not exactly where we would want to be. But on the other end, like you're saying, we must also find ways of taming inflation and uh, controlling. You know, recently, the, the, the dollar hit about 13.10 to the city. As of yesterday, yeah. it had fallen to about 12.4%. Uh, thereabouts. So, yes, measures here and there, but ultimately, hmm, let's see how, how it, it, it works out for our economy. Uh, the final one there in the Daily Graphic, over 30,000 unclaimed passports gathered dust. That story on page 20. If you've not gone for yours, pick it up. Five arrested over tax evasion. That story is on the back page of the Daily Graphic. And Monkey Pox claims four lives, 116 local cases recorded and uh, Ghana has recorded four deaths with 116 confirmed cases of the monkeypox disease in 14 of the 16 regions uh, as of the close of 2022. It also means that it's something we ought to be looking at carefully. The virus spreads through respiratory droplets and close contact with the rashes of an infected person. So if you see someone, I mean I'm not trying to say you should go discriminating, but if you see uh, someone who is showing some of these symptoms, you might want to be a little careful. Uh -huh. Just like with COVID, someone will get it and stay alive. Another person might get it and not make it. So just be cautious. The Ghanaian Times newspaper, 
Uh, that story is the big one there. Over 30,000 passports remain uncollected. That's according to the Foreign Ministry. Show love to persons with leprosy. That's according to the Veep. Reminds me of when I led a team to the Wager Leprosarium. And he is here pictured lovingly holding uh, one of them and interacting with her. Stop charging in dollars. Pack order state agencies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's I'm very sorry. The irony with that. <laughs> that's, always... that's exactly why I'm laughing. Yes. Your thoughts you on know, that, even get, before we get into the story. You go to a state agency to transact business and they give you the quotation in dollars and they add, oh, you pay in CD equivalent and you, you, you ask them, oh, but why, why is it like that? <laughs> you know, because the Bank of Ghana is telling everybody not to, to stop pricing in dollars. Like, well, we have to do it. We have to generate funds. It, it's, it's really a big problem. Um, when you cannot, you are saying that on one hand, the citizens should not do something, but state agencies completely ignore it. Um, they, they, sometimes they tell you that, well, we deal with foreigners who are trying to do business in Ghana. So for example, the GIPC prices, um, the minimum capital requirement are still pegged in dollars. They will tell you, well, we are, we are targeting uh, foreigners who want to do business in Ghana, bring stability and whatever, whatever. If you go to immigration service, they still price their services mostly in dollars, but you're allowed to pay in cities, you know, just, it's just the irony um, where the hotels will tell you, well, we're also dealing with foreign clients mostly. So why are we not allowed to price in dollars and then uh, uh, receive the currency in cities? So um, I, I agree completely with the call of the, of the PAC um, uh, boss. Thank you very much. Uh, there's also, so maybe we should just take a swipe at that story very quickly. Over 30,000 passports are yet to be collected by their owners despite text messages sent to them to do so at the various centers across the country, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration has said. The ministry is therefore appealing to the general public, particularly passport applicants, about the urgent need for them to collect their printed passports from the various passport application centers. A statement released by the ministry in Accra yesterday said, I'm sure it's also, it also has to do with space constraints. So you are not picking up yours and they have to let go of them. Uh, that, there's also changes in minority leadership, party caucus and crunch meeting today. I've, I've heard or I've read actually uh, Muntaka Mubarak say that if the chairman of the party, Johnson Esiru Nketiah, says uh, the FEC and the NEC were involved, he should show any form of interactions that have been had. But of course, there's been justification from the leadership of the party that this is the way to go. It's in the best interest of the NDC. And in London recently, we also heard the chairman of the party make mention of the fact that part of what happened could actually be attributed to the fact that some of the leadership of the party were getting into too many brushes with the speaker. They were supposed to cooperate with him, and it, they were rather doing something else. And any quick reflections on, on those? Well, I, I had... Hello, Bobby. Sorry, I, had, I had that justification by the party chairman where he said, well, uh, if you have an NDC person as the Speaker of Parliament, you should expect some advantages. And that, um, unfortunately, they are not seeing those advantages because the minority leadership is not cooperating, but it is the majority leadership that is cooperating. Mm. I, I really didn't understand what he meant by, you know, those kind of advantages, because the Speaker of Parliament mm. is the Speaker of Parliament. He's not elected to be on one side. And if the party intentionally feels entitled to favorable treatment by the Speaker of Parliament, mm. that is a cause for concern. Because from what he said, that is the, how I got that he feel entitled that, well, it is a man that is there. Mm. So we should get some, some level of um, 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 favoritism or as it well, were. Well, while I, 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 I will not hold brief for him, I've listened to conversations on that very you know, subject. Mm. And mm. the understanding, what, what he says basically is, we did not go through all we did, you know. It's the first time that in the Fourth Republic and maybe in across our Czech and political history, we have a minority person becoming Speaker of Parliament. But I think he made the point uh, to mean that you cannot have the situation, I recall, where you would have the majority cooperating with the Speaker and for you rather in the minority from whose stock he came to be 
um, to have that sort of friction with the Speaker in the House. And I think you recall that interaction with Muntaka uh, Mubarak, the Member of Parliament for Asawasi, and how it got pretty hot in Parliament. Uh, the speaker citing him for some disrespect, you know. So mm -hmm. I think those are the ones he's pointing to. Not necessarily that maybe they expect the speaker to be on their side. I, I think that that is uh, the point. Well, it's to be it's, made. it's 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 fair um, to 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 what is actually happening in respect of the party. Like we, I always say that it's it's in the interest of our democracy that we have these top two political parties actually up their game, united and with a singular vision. So that they will provide better, or sorry, not better, but they will provide alternate policies to the Ghanaian electorates. And right. so, if there are those um, internal wranglings, um, it's, it's, it means that they may not go into the elections with a united front where they would focus on providing alternate policies, but rather solving the disunity apparently within their party. I heard um, uh, Mr. Muntaka say that if, if they do not solve these problems, it may affect their electoral chances. So, I think that it is in their own interest, because whether we like it or not, I think the NDC feels that they, they've not stood a better chance of winning elections than this year because of the economic situations and other things that the MPP um, have not done really well. And so if they allow these internal wranglings to divert their focus and attention from preparing for the elections, I, I, I think that it will not be in the interest of, of Ghanaians where we would then be deprived of a formidable force going into the election, providing us with alternate policies. I must also add that it seems to me, and I hope that the elders will come into to 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 the elders of the NDC will come into solve it. That they are they are the the, the two sections or or should I say sections or the two um, 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 the two sides within the NDC because we've had some members of parliament petitioning the the highest decision-making body of the NDC, saying that they do not agree because the caucus was not consulted. Right. We have some members of parliament who also, and the national executives, also saying what? We didn't have to consult the caucus because you were the ones we were coming to remove you. And I believe and, that... And in fact, in fact, the chairman says they did consult all the key personalities, or most of them within the party. It's just that they may not be coming out to say, I consulted Asemesi, this person, or the other person. But that they took varied opinions, some for, some against. They sat, thought through them, and decided this was the way to go. But I, I thought I heard him say that they didn't consult the, the, the leadership if, of, of man, the people that they were seeking to remove. Because they thought oh, that, it, you know... It, it's the people themselves. Remove. Well, for those, yes. I hear letters were sent to them. Yes, after, post the event. So I think that if they, they all compromise, at the end of the day, they are all in the interest of the NDC. And so with all the experience that they have under their belt, <coughs> Mr. Harun Ayyus, who being one of the longest serving members of parliament, I think he's done 20 years or thereabout. Um, same with Mr. Muntaka. And the level of experience that General Mosquito, eh, sorry, now Chairman Mosquito, has under his belt. I think that they should be able to reach a compromise so that Ghanaians would have that formidable force of right. the NDC going into the 2024 elections that will provide us alternate policies to, to make up our minds whether we should bring them to power or, or help the MPP break the eight. Uh, Bobby, we have to go in a bit. I'll read out some uh, major headlines, topical ones from different papers. You choose which of them uh, to address. Uh, <laughs> Chuyabosum dumps wife and he, he says um, that's in the Daily Guide newspaper. Uh, it has come to an end with his wife, and he's moving on. Eight grabbed over school placement expose. And I'm sure you followed that. Uh, Joy News, uh, the yes, fourth estate, uh, I've that, and yeah. the rot that it has uncovered. People taking up to about 11,000 Ghana cities, even caterers. People in the canteen being able to, you know, get things together, give money here, give money there, and pocket their share. There's also mm. public debt hits $575 billion. Uh, Ghana CDs. Uh, just to add this one, the Finder newspaper on page two. Economic challenges hit banks severely and current macroeconomic challenges are ne negatively impacting the banking and financial sectors, resulting in the sector's unimpressive performance in December 2022 compared with December 2021 as some key financial uh, soundness indicators recorded significant declines. It, it makes mention of 32.2% increment in operating expenses, 
184% increment in provisions. It goes on and on. You can check out details of that on page two of the paper. There's also Alan is a man of integrity, Reverend Ampia Kofi. That's the new crusading guide. Which ones would you reflect on as we cap it off? Well, I, the school placement situation, the whole idea of the school placement was to prevent the perceived nepotism, corruption, uh, bribery that was associated with the heads of schools selecting the persons that they want to be their, their, I mean, within their schools. And so if the problem is still not gone, then we would have to check the system and make sure that it's actually free and very fair. And then yeah. persons that deserve to be in so the schools, the whole idea was to make sure that you know you do not have um, only certain class of persons attending the A-list schools as, as we have it. And so I, I hope that they, they, they check it. With the um, statement on the integrity of Mr. Alankash, I, I, it's, it's um, very interesting, the, the MPP flag bearership race. Um, he seems to have taken the lead in terms of starting it um, and making all the waves as it were. I, I, I hope that they, they, it, it, it follows through. What, what is interesting for me is that as we go in year in, year out, or with every election, you see the religious aspects playing more prominent role in the campaign activities of, of, of the various um, aspirants. And so right. when you see, for example, um, um, Mr. Kennedy in Japan, um, I saw some of his billboards with the Matthew quotation <laughs> On mm, it, right? Um, 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 Alan Chamantin also first showing that you know he had the spiritual backing of the spiritual leaders or some of the spiritual leaders on the land, inviting yeah. them. Yeah. I think there was a meeting at Kempinski or Moving Pick or something, and yeah. then later hosting a Thanksgiving event. So you see more and more the the uh, politicians or the aspirants are seeing that okay, we need to involve. The religious leaders. My my only hope is that it is actually not for political expediency, sake right. And that it so you don't have somebody who in the past would 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 say things that are unprintable against politically uh, sorry religious leaders and 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 people that he thinks spend more time in church as it when all all of a sudden because right. he wants to be president or he wants to be vice president or he wants to hold political office. But, but, but that's, then, that's, that's exactly what we see them do. They capitalize on everything. They'll come to you and yeah. eat with you and all of that. But anyway, we'll have to cap it off here. Unfortunately, our time has run out. But Bobby, thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Adisco. <laughs> <laughs> have a good thank day. We're so grateful that. that you took the time to join us this morning. Thank you. Okay, then. Right. Bobby Banson joined us for the news review. He is a lawyer. Before we go into sports, Ador Kluche, uh, today is your birthday and you're always following on social media, always watching the show. Thank you so much uh, for doing us the honors and have a blessed birthday. On that note, let's do some sports.